There is a special device that I think all preppers need to have that will help with self-sufficiency and being able to take care of repairs and issues long term, maybe even when there is no grid power. And surprisingly enough, that is a 3D printer. This is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and I have been running it on my Delta 3 from EcoFlow. Now, before you click away thinking that this is a gimmick, I legitimately use a 3D printer for my emergency preparedness, as well as ways of making more money so that I can have more preps. It is a multifaceted tool, and I specifically went with the X1 Carbon because it has a multi-filament option called their AMS. That's the cartridge holder that's on the very top. Now, just for this video, I went and printed a bunch of different items so you could see some examples. For example, say you need a framing square because you need to build something, you can use a speed square in order to keep your cuts clean and straight for any type of carpentry work that you would need to do. When I go backpacking, hunting, anything out in the mountains, I always bring a whistle, and the one that I use is 3D printed, and it's very loud. I printed about six of these in about 20 minutes on this Bamboo Lab X1. That's one of the other reasons why I went with the X1 Carbon is because other 3D printers that I've owned in the past, such as the Anchor Cubic Viper, great starter unit, but it was so slow that it made it really hard to get 3D prints done effectively. And one of the things that I love the most is this blue band you see right here. See, I lent out this blower to someone and they brought it back and the ring that goes on this piece here, they brought it back broken. So rather than sending this whole thing back, I simply designed and 3D printed this ring myself with the free software that's called Tinkercad. And in order to get the measurements that I needed for this, I literally printed out my own caliper that's accurate down to about half of a millimeter. And I was even able to print it in multiple colors so that I can easily see what's going on here. So all I had to do was take this and get an outside measurement, which puts it right at about five centimeters or 50 millimeters. Then I needed to know the inside measurement of these holes and these calipers allow me to get that measurement, and it's right at about six millimeters. So using the measurements from a tool that I 3D printed, I was able to make this all from my own without knowing any CAD design. I was able to make this so that I could repair my tool. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, that's really stupid. Why not just take it back and get a warranty claim? And I absolutely probably could have done that, just taken it back to Home Depot, said this broke, and they would have given me a new one. That's besides the point. It's a 30 minute drive for me to get to Home Depot, plus the time it takes to go through Home Depot. So an hour and a half worth of time, which took me less time to 3D print this band. And it's obviously stronger than the one that was already on here. So not only did it save me time and money, but then I also got to learn how to make more tools. Now, when I got the Bamboo Lab X1, I originally bought a bunch of these extra spool holders. And then I learned that the Bamboo X1 Carbon actually comes with preloaded files on it, where you can 3D print these yourself. So then I can actually buy more 3D filaments that are cheaper because they don't come with a new spool. And then I can put that refill spool onto this and then not have to worry about paying more for a 3D filament. Now there are tons of things you can 3D print and I'd like to do mine off of solar because I think it's fun. It also makes it even more financially friendly because I'm just using a solar generator and some solar panels. So all I do is I take my unit, go charge it quickly off solar panels, and then I bring it back in my office and I run my 3D prints. I'm able to get about six to eight hours of printing off of one charge off of my Delta 3. And so far, none of these prints have taken me more than five hours for one consecutive print. So one of my favorite things has been the caliper uh, and the speed square, but even just making bag clips or any type of enclosure. So for bags where I hold oxygen absorbers or desiccants for food storage, because I do freeze drying, I can take this bag clip and then keep that bag free from air going in and out because this has a peak and a valley right here. So this does a really good job of clamping the bag down to make sure no air is getting in or out. So I can keep on printing tools that help me further in my preps. Even if I've got a clogged drain, I 3D printed this hair catcher for drains. I figure what it's called, but you shove it down into a drain and you spin it around a bunch of times and it grabs all the hair and then it pulls it out and cleans it. This cost me like 18 cents or something like that to make. And look how flexible it is. This isn't breaking, it doesn't have any issues. I need a way to clean the drain. This is a super simple way to do it. Not everything's perfect with 3D printing. This is a fly swatter that I made and you can see that it actually broke this corner killing some flies. So not everything's gonna be perfect but I could use a different material that is stronger than this and also make this thicker and I can design that all on my own quite easily with the free programs that come with the 3D printer or what's available online. And speaking of flies, I made this fruit fly trap. I am sick and tired of fruit flies being all over my fruit 
So I 3D printed this cone, which allows flies to go inside of it and then not find their way out. And this fits perfectly on top of a mason jar. And speaking of mason jars, we love to cook brisket. That's one of our favorite meals here in my family. We buy our hickory smoked salt in bulk in these large bags, and then we transfer it into mason jars. Last time I made a brisket, it was a pain in the neck trying to shake out all the salt evenly. So I 3D printed a little shaker that goes directly on top of a mason jar. It says the shaker setting, the pour setting, and the close setting all in one. And it took less than 20 minutes to print three of these. Now, one of the things that I really like are these little stands right here. These I use for my freeze dryer. When I go to pre-freeze my food, it's always flopped all over the freezer and I really hate that. I was wishing that I could stack all of the trays on top of each other. So I 3D printed this spacer right here, which goes on the corner of the trays. And so the bottom tray goes right here and the top tray goes right on here. And so it perfectly spaces out all of my trays so that I can easily freeze everything evenly by putting it all into the freezer at once. And then same thing when it comes to pulling it out of my freeze dryer, I can stack everything neatly and work on the food in terms of getting it packaged up. Now these 3D prints that I did, I did on the fastest setting and it took a couple of hours because there were so many of them. But the point is, rather than paying for all of this stuff that's gonna be way overpriced, I can just make it myself in less time than it would take to get it delivered from Amazon or to go to Home Depot and buy them myself. Pretty much anything to your imagination. This is a butt stop clamp uh, that basically makes that the butt pad does not get compressed over time. So that way, as this sits in my safe, for example, it's gonna keep the butt stock from losing its squishiness. So whether you're making tools for your freeze dryer or for carpentry or for measuring things or for keeping the filament dry, this is a special container that holds desiccant to keep the filament dry so that way it works better. Or if you wanna make vases, or coasters, or anything that you can think of is pretty much 3D printable, and that's why I love it so much. Now, the reason I bought a 3D printer was originally to start prototyping my solar panel leg bracket that I've invented. This right here did not exist. There was nothing like it on the market. So I've spent years trying to perfect this bracket, and it's extremely hard to do if every time you want to make a mold of it, you have to pay thousands of dollars to have a new mold. That was really not the route to go. So I got my initial start by using my 3D printer to make these parts and test it. Now I need to use an injection mold and a special material for this, so that way you can take the weight of heavy solar panels. But the whole idea here, and you can find this at poweredportablesolar.com, you can take this leg mount, slide it onto the top of this telescoping leg, and then this bracket bolts onto the back of a solar panel, and then this whole leg gets attached to the solar panel so that way it's adjustable. All the ground mounts out there are ridiculously expensive for just setting up panels in a temporary setup, whether it's for RVing, power outage, or whatever. So doing 3D printing allowed me to design and make prototypes of this bracket so that way I could have a better version of a leg mount for solar panels. I've literally been working on this for about three years. It is a very long and difficult process to go through patenting and prototyping and everything. But the point is I have saved thousands and thousands of dollars of making prototypes using a 3D printer. So really there is no limit to what you can make on a 3D printer besides the size. So one of the things that I'll be printing is a soup can organizer for my food storage room. All of my cans of soup are right now just stacked on top of each other and I want to be able to cycle them. Well, I got a free file online for a first in first out soup can organizer. It's basically one of those organizers where you put it in on the top and it rolls down to the bottom and then you pull the cans out as you need them. Well, rather than paying 20 bucks on Amazon for one, I can 3D print one for less than a dollar. So yeah, it may take a little bit of time to do it, but the fact that I get to do it and it saves me a ton of money versus buying everything, and as well as that I can run my 3D printer off grid at any time if I need to make repairs, that's why I think all preppers need to look at having a 3D printer. I specifically chose the X1 Carbon due to its reliability. I spent months researching what my next 3D printer would be, and consistently, out of all the reviews that I watched and read, the X1 Carbon came up as the best one to go with because out of the box, it's very simple to use. And then I chose to get the AMS filament holder above it because I like the option of being able to have multiple colors in my prints. Just like you see here, these are fun coasters that I made for my wife. You can see the different colors here. You can print up to five different colors if you get the AMS. That's because the AMS holds four filaments and then you can add a fifth one onto the back even upgrades to the X1 Carbon itself, you can just 3D print them rather than spending more money to a manufacturer and then having that shipped to you. You can just 3D print them. So everything from arts and crafts things with my kids, we've made fun dragons and axolotl toys, 
all the way up to pots and decoration for my wife and to repairing my power tools. 3D printers allow you to really create whatever you want. And there are millions of files online that are downloadable for free and I've started making a catalog of all the things that I think that I could possibly need to 3D print if the grid were down or if we were in some sort of long-term crisis. So a lot of people look at these and say, well, that's cute. And to me, I say, well, this helps me be more prepared. 3D printing has become an everyday thing for me and I'm always looking for ways to improve things around my house, whether it's for comfort or for function. Now I was able to get this while there's a Black Friday sale going on, still going on right now. I believe it ends early December. I don't have the exact information, but I'll have everything in the description down below if you're interested in getting what I have. I have just found this to be extremely reliable. I've currently got about 100 hours of printing on this exact X1 Carbon and I've had zero issues. I've not had any issues with filament clogs or with the nozzles having any issues or with filament feeding, nothing at all. Whereas my other 3D printers like my N-Cubic, that did have problems all of the time and I've had to repair that way before I reached 100 hours. I wasn't looking for a new hobby on how 3D printers work. I didn't want to spend a bunch of time repairing 3D printers. I just wanted to pull it out of the box and have it work. So there's huge discounts right now. So if you're interested, then I'd check that out. If not, then there are tons of different brands out there. I simply found that Bamboo Labs has some of the highest reviews and best units out there. And that's why I chose to go with the X1 Carbon. So I definitely wouldn't say that this should be one of the first things you should buy. There are many other things you should have, including solar or backup batteries. So that way you can run your 3D printer if the grid is out. There are so many other things in terms of preps that should be done before you get a 3D printer. But if you're at that stage where you're looking for the next thing to take you to the next level, to give you that X factor or the edge over having better preps long term, I would definitely look at 3D printing. Thanks guys, be prepared. See you on the next video.